right, guys, let's get started. So on these, we had to do sine, cosine, and tangent. Some of them were easy, some were more challenging. So I'm just going to call on people like Melissa to help me out with these. Yeah. So Melissa on sine, just real easy. What are the coordinates at 5 pi thirds? Awesome. Now this asked me to do the sine of 5 pi thirds. So which one are we interested in? There you go. It's the y value, right? Because sine relates to y. So if we wanted to write this all out, what we would do is we would say the sine of 5 pi thirds is equal to the negative square root of 3 over 2. I want you to get in the habit of doing that. You don't have to do anything, but that's, it should make more sense what you're saying if it looks like that. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. So now let's go to Brian. Help me out on number two, Brian. What are your coordinates at 7 pi fourths? Awesome. Now what are we doing here? Doing cosine, which value do we want to get? x. So this one, I would say the cosine of 7 pi fourths is a positive square root of 2 over 2. Do you guys agree with both of these so far? Oh, are you, so check, are you doing 5 pi thirds or are you doing 7 pi fourths? Yeah, so on your unit circle at 5 pi thirds, it should be 1 half a negative square root of 2 over 2. If you're getting square root of 2 over 2, that means you're looking at 7 pi fourths, which means maybe when you're filling it out, you put something in the wrong space. So maybe we'll check that after we get through this warm up. Can I just see it real quick? looks good. All right, so let's go to tangent on number three. Who's feeling confident and wants to talk about tangent? Mindy, she wasn't even here. Well, so, this, one, this one actually I know who's tangent. Okay, so what are your coordinates at 225? 225, the coordinates are negative square root 2 over 2 and negative square root 2. Okay, now if we're doing tangent, this was new from last time, how did we find that? y over x. And guys, this is where I want you to not overthink it, okay? What do you notice about the x and the y? They're the same. They're the same. So if I take something that's the same, or so, if I take something and I divide it by itself, what is that going to turn into? 1, but in our case, negative. So now, actually on this one, since they're both negative, it turns into a positive. Oh. If one had been positive and one had been negative, then yeah, it would have been negative. You told me negative. Well, you wrote it down there, so. Hey! <laughs> All right. Let's go to, um, how do I check this? I want to just show you on your calculator. The other numbers were funny. But will you get out your calculator and put in tangent 225? Does it give you 1? Yeah, it does. Will everyone try that just to make sure it works? The tangent button is above the, is it above 9? What number is it above? Oh, the parentheses? Yeah. Okay. So just go in there and put in tangent 225, and do you get one? Yes. Yes? Awesome, it works. Okay, cool. So one, two, three, those were all on your unit circle, but four, five, and six, they were not. So Isaac, what did you have to do on four in order to figure out what that angle even is? Mm -hmm. You take five, ten, uh -huh. and you subtract it by three, six. Right. And you get 150. And let's check that on your unit circle. Does 150 seem to be right about there? Great, we got it. So then, Isaac, what are your coordinates for 150? It would be one half. Or yeah. So hold on. Let me get the coordinates down. So I believe the x is at negative square root of three over two, and then the y is one half. And you are saying since we're doing sine, we're going to take 
one half. It's one half, right? You guys agree with that? Let's check it. On your calculator, put in sine 510. Does it give you one half? Or in other words, 0.5. Nice. Isn't it fun when it works and you can check it? I think that's great. Hey, I want to skip five for now. Let's go to six. Is there anyone who wants to volunteer for, as tribute for six? Go ahead, Eleanor. Um, so, give the tangent of 200, we're, going, we're not going clockwise, we're going counterclockwise. We want to go counterclockwise. Yeah. yeah, we want that one. Yep. So... So we'll, we'll call that the negative square root of 3 yeah. half, and then we'll have Now question, what angle are you looking at? How did you know that negative 210 would be right there? How could we get a coterminal angle on our unit circle? Let's just add 360, which is going to give us 150. And those are the coordinates at 150, right? Alright, so let's do that. So we're doing tangent, so that's y over x. So I'm going to write that as 1 half divided by negative square root of 3 over 2. Yeah. As Eleanor said, we're going to keep, change, and then flip it so it's a negative 2 over the square root of 3. What happened from there, Eleanor? Um, the, the two cancel each other out. Uh -huh. We have 1 over 3. Good, but we're going to keep that negative with it. Negative 1 over the square root of 3. And what's the issue there, guys? Uh, we don't like the square root on the bottom. We don't like square roots in the denominator. Yeah, so what do I have, have to do? To you no. have to multiply by the word itself. There you go. Multiply by itself or another oh. word square that. Not three, just the three. So that's going to give me a negative square root of 3 in the, in the numerator. And in the denominator... What's the square root of 3 times the square root of 3? 9. Square root of 9, which is 3. So the tangent of negative 210 is going to be negative square root of 3 over 3. Now this is where people start to ask, they're like, well, how do I check that on my calculator? I like doing that. This is really kind of like, if you put this in your calculator, it'd be ugly. So here's what I want you to do. Put in tangent of negative 210 and push enter and it should be an ugly decimal. Yeah, Did it give you an ugly five, decimal? Seven, yeah, five, seven, seven. Now I want you to put in negative square root of 3 and then divide it by 3 and it should give you the same ugly decimal. Or if you wanted to make it easier just do negative 1 over the square root of 3 since it's the same thing. And then you're going to compare that with when you did tangent, do you get the same ugly decimal? someone to confirm that it works. I'm, just, I'm stuck. I go into square root of 3 and I'm stuck inside of square root So you got to push the arrow to get out. And then you get out. Okay. Did it work, Melissa? Awesome. We got one to work. So that's how you do it if you want to check your work there. I'm like, I'm stuck in the square root. <laughs> okay. Now, Skylar is going to kind of help me on 5, right? Because that was the hardest one, so Skylar's going to help us on it. What did we say? What did you we figure out that we had to do here. It's negative 17 pi thirds. Not only is it in radians, it's also negative, and it's more than one rotation. This was like all of them. So what'd you do, Skylar? Uh, yeah, so if we have a negative, we need to add on rotations. Okay, so not only was this negative, but it went more than one how many complete revolutions did it do? Two. It did two. So if I look at this, I have to do one rotation for its negative, and then two rotations for the complete revolutions. That's three rotations. Now, how, since this is in radians, what is one rotation in radians? Uh, two pi. Two pi. So then what's two rotations? Four pi. Four pi. So what's three rotations? So what I need to do here is I need to add 6 pi to this. However, 
It doesn't work out yet because what's the rule of adding fractions, guys? Same denominator. And right now, one's is three, one's a one. So what should I change that one to be? You multiply it by, you can multiply it by three and turn it into three on the bottom. Good. And if I multiply three on the bottom, three on the top, so this gives me negative 17 pi thirds plus six times three is 18 pi thirds. So you get negative one. Oh, no, positive one. Positive one, one yeah. Third. You get one third. So our coterminal angle here one is pi one pi third. So look at your unit circle. Does this appear to be at the right spot for pi thirds? Yes. Okay, awesome. Skylar, come back to you at pi thirds. What are your coordinates? Uh-huh. Yep. Great, and if we're doing cosine, which one of those do we want? Perfect. So I'm going to write this out. The cosine of negative 17 pi thirds is equal to 1 half. Good job. Okay, I'm not going to circle that because I didn't circle the other. Now, here's a question. What if I wanted to check this on my calculator? The problem is this is in radians. What would you have to change on your calculator in order to put that in? You change your mode. Does everyone know how to change their mode? Maybe. Look by the blue second button, and you see the button that says mode? And then if you go down a couple options, it'll give you two options, radians or degrees. I prefer it to be in degrees because that's what we use a lot. But if you want to check it, you would put it into radians, and then you could put in the cosine of negative 17 pi thirds, and it should give you 1 half or 0.5. One of the most common things that happens when people do bad on a test. They'll go and like do the whole test in radians and all of their angles are in degrees and they get the wrong answer. So always check your mode to make sure you're good. So if, you, if you're in radians and you put in like tan 16, will it give you the wrong It gives you the wrong answer, yep. Oh wow. So you gotta make sure you're putting it in the right mode. Always check that. All right, was that a good warm up? You guys feeling good? Yeah. Hey, so I've got good news. Well, before I get to the good news, do you have any questions on the warm-up? So as a review, how do you get the sine? What do you look at? Y. y. Sine is y. How do you get the cosine? S. And how do you get tangent? Y over y x. Y over x. Good job. Oh, no, x over y. No, 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 it's y over x. I have x over y. All right, change that. Because, yeah, tangent, if, if we think about Sokotoa, 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 what does tangent use? The opposite and adjacent. Opposite and adjacent. Now, if we look at a triangle on the unit circle, the opposite side is your y value, and the adjacent side is your x value. And what we're going to use later on is that the y represents sine, and the x represents cosine. So tangent is sine divided by cosine. I think I heard that. Okay. Now, we're going to do a pretty short lesson. It's actually not too hard. It's pretty easy. So will you do me a favor and get out the notes that starts like this. It says, today's objectives, I can determine which angle produces certain trig ratios. Yeah, are you looking at today's page? Now, I'm going to explain this. Did you hear that shock? Pretty yeah, good. Yeah. Static electricity. Okay, when we've been looking at your unit circle, what we've been saying before is I'll give you a, an angle like 135. And I'll say, hey, what is the sine of it? And you would say, oh, well, let's look at the y value. This is a positive square root of 2 over 2. And I'd say, what's the cosine? And you'd say, oh, that's the x value. That's a negative square root of 2 over 2. And then I'd say, what's a tangent? And you divide them, y over x, and you get negative. That's what we've been doing, right? What we're going to do right now is work a little backwards here, where we don't know the angle. And they said, hey, which angle, if I took the cosine of it, so it'd be like the cosine of theta, gives me negative square root of 2 over 2. And what you do is you say, OK, if it's cosine, then am I looking at x or y? And so I look at my unit circle, and I say, hey, where is x negative square root of 2 over 2? And you'd say, boom, this angle, which was what? 
135. You also have to know what quadrant it is, or you could mistake it for flight uh, 225. That's a great point, is if I look at 225, do I also see the x value of negative square root of 2 over 2? Yeah. So I'm going to be getting multiple answers here. 225 is what we said, right? Yeah. Because there's two angles that give that, OK? So this right here, this is our whole lesson. We just did it. Isn't that great? Oh, now we're going to do a lot of examples. So first off, does everyone have a completed unit circle? In my circle, you OK, no, that's, that we're good now. Let me show you how we're going to do this. We're going to go through about eight or so examples here. And then we're going to practice for your quiz, and then over the weekend you're going to take your quiz, okay? Okay, so let's jump to this. Sine of one half. We want to know which angle, if I take the sine of it, gives me one half. Now, what we're going to do a lot of practice in here is we're going to be looking at our quadrants, okay? And um, where it's positive or negative. So let's actually just kind of take a second and draw this out. Okay, where is sine positive? Which quadrant? So we've got quadrant one, two, three, four. Now sine is looking at which values, x or y? Y. So in which quadrants will y be positive? One and two, because that's where it's going up, right? If it's measuring the y value, in quadrant one and two, that's where it's positive. So what I want you guys to do is to look on your unit circle in quadrant one and two. And if we're doing sine, look at your y value. And for which angles is the y value um, one half? Hold on, no shout just yet. But looking at your unit circle, look at your y values, where is it one half? OK, Mindy shouted out 30. Do you guys agree? If you look at 30 degrees, is the y value 1 half? Yes. OK, cool. Where else? 150. When I look at 150 on the unit circle, is the y value 1 half? So then my two answers here are 30 and 150. Cool, cool. Um, always look for more than one, but sometimes it's only going to be one. Like if we're doing, uh, co like, we'll, we'll see some examples, okay? We'll get there. But a lot of times with sine and cosine, you're going to see two. So cosine of theta is negative one half. So pause before we jump into this too much. Which value does cosine measure? X. Where, in which quadrants is X going to be negative? So in quadrants 2 and 3, we're negative. So that's where x is negative, because we want it to be negative, right? So what angles in quadrants 2 and 3 is the x value negative? I heard someone shout out one. What did you say? OK, great. So in quadrant 2 at 120, we get uh, an x value. Do you guys agree with that? Where, what's another one? So that's in quadrant 3. Three is the x value negative one half? Yes. There you go. That's all you're doing on these, okay? Is that making some sense? Okay, let's keep on rolling. We're gonna go to we're gonna do about eight total of these, but they're going pretty fast, okay? Okay, so now help me out on this one. So sign, what letter is sign? Y. Y. Now, it's going to give me a negative. So it's, it's helpful to, I like to draw this little mini xy plane here. And I want to think about when are the val trig ratios going to be positive and when are the trig ratios going to be negative. So guys, where, if I'm looking at the y values being negative, which quadrant is that going to be? Three and four, right? That's where y's are negative. So look in the third and fourth quadrant. Where is the y value negative square root of two over two? What do you see? 225, perfect, and? Great. Now, what if it was like, hey, give the angle measure in radians? Well, then you just look at what's the radian one, right? By 225, what's that in radians? 
And what's 350? Okay, so it's not too hard. You could just times it by pi over 180, or you can look at your units. All right, now when we get into tangent, this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. Remind me, how do we get tangent? Yes, y over x. Y over x. So I'm going to look at y over x. Now, what's the only way I'm going to get 0? The 0 in the numerator for the y. Great. So here's what I'm going to do is looking at my unit circle, where is the y value 0? So at 0, if you look right here, my coordinates are 1, 0. So if I were to take the y value, which is 0, and divide it by x, you get 0 over 1. And what does that become? 0. zero. zero. So my first answer is going to be at 0 degrees, which is also the same as 360, right? Those are coterminal. Is there another place where we could get it? Oh, 180. 180. Let's look at 180. The coordinates at 180 are negative 1 and 0. And if I do 0 over negative 1, what is that going to become? Zero. Still 0. That negative didn't make any difference. So then my other answer is going to be 180. Yep, exactly. Hey, let's, let's actually look at that for a second, okay? Someone might say, well, let's look at 90 degrees. I have 0, 1. But guys, remember, we talked about this last time. What is 1 divided by 0? And for that matter, anything divided by 0. Error. <laughs> Undefined. That's what it's going to say. And that's actually going to be on your practice. It'll say, hey, find it so that tangent is undefined. And that means you're dividing by zero, which means, hey, you're probably going to look at like 90 or 270, okay? Okay, how are you feeling about this? I'm feeling like there's some pretty deep patterns in this. Yep, there's plenty of patterns. Okay, here's what I want you to do is there's two more, two more pages here. There's sine of zero, cosine of square root of two over two, cosine gives you negative square root of three over two, and tangent gives you negative one. So there's four problems here, and I want you to take about two or three minutes or so, and I want you to try these with your buddy, okay? Try to get those four, and then we'll review and see how you did.